Hi, I want to talk about how we find courage in times like this. Um, N.T. Wright just came out with an article in Time Magazine and he talks about lament and in it he describes different ways that at times as Christians we might try to figure out how to control what's going on around us. We might try to look for the right formula. Um, if we pray just the right way, if we live just the right way, we'll be able to control all the outcomes in life and keep things safe for ourselves. And the reality is um, that just doesn't work. If you, I tried it as a younger person, I'm sure quite of you did too, and, and just as life goes on, you realize that is just not a strategy that works. And ironically, it's actually a strategy by attempting to control everything. It's a strategy that makes us feel even more out of control. And so in a time like this, it is important to control the things we can, our hand washing, social distancing, good financial decisions, all of those things are really important to control. But it's also important to, to accept the things that we just cannot control. And it seems like a bad idea, but it's actually really the beginning or the first step toward courage. It's looking around going, this is a world that fell. Um, it, it's not in its original con intent and condition. It was supposed to look a certain way and it doesn't look that way any longer. Um, and it's gonna look a certain way again, but we're not there yet. And so we're in this in-between world where God is here and he's present, but there's still a brokenness that we have to deal with. And the kind of the more that we can accept that and the more we can lean into that, the more we can approach the brokenness with a sense of courage and a sense of bravery. And that makes all the difference. It makes all the difference in how we show up um, in this world and how we bring God's love and light into this world. Um, I've mentioned this at other times and at different points, but I've had a chance to travel just at different points, places around the globe. And there are places that are really depressed or violent or you know, oppressed governments and things like that. It's just brutal. And, and sometimes showing up after there's been a, a disaster or a traumatic event. And what's always so interesting is to see people who went through the same dis disaster as everybody else, and they show up in the community wanting to make a contribution, being brave, wanting to help, being part of the solution, praying and walking in faith and hope. And there's just something radiating out of them that you can't help but love and admire and um, feel really inspired by. And so it's interesting, there's a book called Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl wrote it, and you've probably heard some um, version of this quote before, but he, he really says at the end of the day, the thing that we really have control over is our attitude. It's our approach, it's the way that we face this world. And he survived concentration camps. Um, he's been through a lot of disaster and in his observations, he noticed the people who were the most resilient, the people who fared the best, whether they made it all the way through the concentration camp or whether they perished in the concentration camp, those who did the best spiritually and emotionally were people with courage. Um, that's the one thing that we can control. And it's funny, I've got a kind of a dumb story, but um, I remember right after 9-11, um, I had was driving down to San Diego. It was a drive I had done, I don't know how many times, for 15 years. Um, I was driving down there from the LA Orange County area because that's where I had friends and family and I, I don't even know how many times I made that drive. And I remember right after 9-11, within the week of 9-11, and there was a lot of helicopter and police activity around the nuclear power plant there. And I remember seeing that and it was something that I had never experienced there. And I thought, oh my goodness, is, what is going on? I mean, this has got, got to be bad news because this is not how this has ever been before. And it was an era before cell phones were popular and there were no smartphones at that point at all. And I'm in the car by myself and I'm assessing the situation, just going, is something happening at this nuclear power plant? I'm looking around, there's no exits. And then it occurs to me, even if there is an exit, how far can you get? Um, and I just remember having a moment of thinking, is this it? You know, is this it? And I prayed and I just said, Lord, how, if it is, what does it mean right now? How do I want to spend my last few moments here if this is it? And I remember just praying about it and thinking, you know what I want to do? I just want to sing. I'm just going to sing. If this is how I'm going to go out and if this is how I'm going to meet my Savior, the thing that I want to be able to do is go out in joy and um, and just know that this is the only thing I can control at this moment. And so it's kind of a silly example. I don't want it to sound trite. I know there are people who have really extraordinary circumstances right now that are very heavy and I don't want to minimize that with this story.
but a lot of us are sitting home and we're just inconvenienced and it's not extraordinary and there's still a temptation to have a lot of fear and to not show up with much courage and power and I just want to push back God is here he is with us the worst thing we can do is go into retreat the worst thing that we can do is live in um, just terror and fear of this the best thing we can do is say Lord you're here I'm still on this earth what do you have for me to do what contribution do you want me to make if all I do is show up with joy with this family that's kind of driving me nuts right now or reach out to people who maybe are isolated then that's what I'm gonna to do today so we want to live in courage um, we want to accept this world is broken and we want to find the best possible way to invite the Holy Spirit to lead us and God's Word to provide for us in a time like this.